It's on. It's on, I think. Don't fucking hurt him, dude. <laughs> Don't fucking hurt him, bruh. 15 inch pythons. <laughs> what you gonna do, brother? <laughs> when the seven inch pythons come for you. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Hi Welcome guys. to YouTube. It says right there we've got uh, zero viewers, but oh my God. it's a little delayed. I know there's people here with us. Oh, yeah. I know there's people tuning in. There we go. Oh, let me turn my volume down, guys. Sorry. Fucking up. Fucking it up. Maybe they're just not coming tonight. I have worms in my butt. Me too. Let's rub them together. <laughs> Let's swap worms. <laughs> Let's let our worms be friends. <laughs> Let's let our worms fuck. Boogada, 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 boogada. We're gonna interview Carissa from the cruise, yeah. and she's gonna we're gonna talk we're gonna call her in just a minute. Hell yeah! <clears throat> so let's get this up, show on the road. I'm not seeing any comments. Let's get this road on the show. Watch it. Oh, there it is. I'll say I got you. Trigger shots. Granola. Gyro. Bravo. Philly. Fairy. Jed to the Saba. Floor. BP. Kelsey. Jaden. Chris. Jersey Pete. Love you, Jersey Pete. <sighs> You're just mad. What do you call two fat fat guy fat gay podcasters? I don't know. What's up, guys? Can't wait to hear more details on Dallas. Pete Brown. Me too. Floor Montoya. I actually just asked Nick about that today. The guy wrote back today. Oh, did he? Yeah. So he's a he's like a he's like a booker. He's nice. A, he's a booger. Hell yeah. So I'm gonna I'm hopefully gonna that works. Message him here in a little bit. Good. It's a ch choppy's something chop house or some chappy's chop. I don't know. It sounds sketchy, but we'll go there. Is we'll it the same show. place that we were talking about before the brewery? No. Nope. Oh, this different is a place. Different. Different. This place is like a comedy club. Oh. Uh, Okay, so yeah. that makes more sense. Yeah, it holds about it holds right at two hundred, which is what we were expecting. Nice. I mean, we were expecting maybe to do with a two hundred venue to do multiple shows. I was saying, are we doing a Friday Saturday? Or? I don't know. It depends. We probably do pre-sale tickets. Yeah. And see how. The, and, yeah, yeah. Even if we got to pay a little bit. Yeah. I sent you to that guy. Oh, thank Reno's you, Pete. Reno's Chop Shop. Thanks, yep. Pete. Yep. I'm talking to. Thanks, buddy. Let me see his name, and I'll tell you who I'm talking to. His name <clears> is. Joseph, I'm talking to old Joe. Big, old Joey boy. Big Joe money. Hell yeah. Andy, did you ever uh, did you ever fruit punch yourself in the pants? Nope. I did not. I did not. What's up, Stefan from Sweden? Damn. Joseph. Sweden. I told <sighs> you guys to come to Austin. I got you hooked up. I don't even know uh, what that means. Jaden, write me again. I might yeah. have lost what the fuck you're talking about. So I need <laughs> to get that figured out. A lot of people have sent us videos and they're like, yeah, it's $6,000. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> Let me just go down there for free. Yeah, we fucking cannot afford that. Yeah. Got to make some overhead. Rest in peace, Bob from Tales from the Dark. Rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> fucking shit, dude. Last week I wrote it. Every, sure every week. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I went and checked his Facebook. I was like, he just posted a couple days ago. Did he die? He said, who said that? I said, stinky wet cookie from YouTube. <laughs> from YouTube. <laughs> Oh, that's the authority right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's fun. I love it, man. Yeah. All right. Let's get this thing let's going. If you've ever made yourself a big old fat, juicy yep. ham, egg, and cheese sandwich mm. and then forgot to eat it, you are not the type <clears throat> of person that we want listening to this podcast. Not at all. We strictly want ham eaters on the to, to listen to this show. Uh, vegans are okay, too. Uh, nonetheless, we are so happy for all you ham eaters to be here. <laughs> so thankful. All you fucking ham eaters. I don't like ham that much. I don't either. I can kind of take it or leave it. Yeah. Unless you put a fried egg and cheese on it, then it's a different ball game. It is different. It's Then it's just a vessel. I like classier things like bologna. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I like bologna more than I like ham. <laughs> Fuck, dude. It's so good. Uh, well, it's a one, flat hot dog. Who doesn't love it? One year, my mom was it was for Thanksgiving or something. And my mom's like, your dad's going to bring something. I don't know. He's going to bring something. And he brought a big old fucking thing of smoked bologna. <laughs> oh, dude. For Thanksgiving. That's Everyone. an aphrodisiac in my house. It was, <clears throat> fuck, dude. It was very tasty. I will yeah. say that. See, I don't like turkey. That's, I'm, I'm not a fan of turkey. Yeah, I can take it. Early. I have to. I've been trying to stick to strictly lean poultry and fish. Yeah. So I've been, you know, eating a lot of turkey for lunch. I fuck stuff. with fish, man. I I had 
we went to Harrison's in Tip City. Yeah. Over the weekend, you ever been there? No. It's what the it's what become. No, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. right next to Rad's, like yeah. or a couple buildings down. Yeah. I got the uh, the baked walleye, and that was really good. My youngest son, who doesn't like anything, loved that place. Yeah, he begs all the time. He's like, "Can we go back there?" Yeah, it's really good, man. It's, I had a glass of wine while I was there too, man. It was nice. Try their cocktail sauce. Really, it's shrimp? It's unreal. She had me a cock. <laughs> I know. We had cock and tail together. It's <laughs> hell yeah, dude. It's the fucking tandem. <laughs> hey guys, we got some new Patreon subscribers. We're gonna give them a qu- a quick shout out. Starting off with Mister Penis Fantastic. God damn. Something I've you, never been called. You think you have a fantastic penis? Well, what about Mr. Penis Fantastic himself and Man. his appearance on our Patreon <clears> thread? <throat> and, you know, you can get your name. You, We can roll your name through the mud and make fun of you a little bit uh, on the on the show. You just go to patreon.com slash podcast for $1 a month. You get your name fucked on, and you get access to ad-free content. And most of the stuff you have to pay more for, we make it available for everybody a dollar and up. Oh yeah, you know. So yeah. go in there and do it. Yeah, it's re- it's recession proof. Yeah. And next we got not Bert, not Girth, but we have Gert. Gert. That's, That's what I'd be I... slanging, dog. <laughs> slanging that Gert. I love yogurt. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Gogurt, fucking sucking on a Gert. I've been eating a lot of that Okio's triple, uh, the Greek yogurt. Yeah, I was. I just had one before I left. Hey, that's a good snack on it. A good healthy Hell snack yeah. on the get. Lots of protein. And a blueberry dog. That's all I fuck with. Yeah, and it breaks. It gets up in your stomach, and it does shit. I don't know yeah. what it does, but yeah, it's, it's good. It's fucking bacteria, dog. It. How about it's old, your- oh, old Vinny Rogers, Vincent Rogers on the Patreon th- thread, Vincent K. McMahon Rogers, thanks for being here. I hope you're no relation to the scumbag that likes getting pooped on there at WWE. <laughs> he does the pooping. <laughs> Vincent Rogers is the pooper. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Congrats, Vince. <clears throat> and last but definitely least, we got Brett Ramsey. Thank you very much, you fucking piece of shit. That's what he's going to do to your butt. He's going to, Ramsey, he's going to just cram it in there. Oh, yeah. Brett, the hitman heart, thanks for being here, buddy. <laughs> Appreciate you, buddy. We truly think the world of you. Now we got a very special guest coming on the show. We got a caller. Hell yeah. This is in relation (laughs) to... She's in the YouTube chat. She just put the eyeballs. Carissa. Hell yeah. Chris and her husband, Matt, they came on the Brohio podcast cruise. Pretty sure they'd never been on a cruise before. And we're we're getting down to the wire, guys. They're coming up in September. You can still hop on there and make some affordable payments if that's what you want to do. She was even able to go on the cruise with a fancy cane. So if she, if she was able to use a cane, you're able to fucking get your big asses off the fucking couch and come on the cruise with us. Hell yeah. Now, you can call Vacation Experts to book the cruise, 502-899-7700. You can dial extension 800 for old Rob Troop, or you can dial extension 808. Rachel Troop and tell them you want to go on the Hillbilly Horror Stories Bro Ohio podcast cruise. You're going to get a cocktail party, a live show, meet and greet. For uh, inside, you're going to be looking at about around five, a little over 500 per person. And you get you get four people in a room and you cut that in half. So yeah. you could realistically, you could go on this cruise for right around, you know, 250 bucks. Yeah. And I highly advise, like I've said it before, I highly advise if you're doing it. Do the fucking cheapest room. I mean, it doesn't matter. You're barely going to well, be. You're going to sleep, shit, and shower in there, and that's hold it. Hold on. I will say, but we stayed in a balcony room, yeah, no, and for us, the never we've never really done anything like that for yeah. ourselves before. I was. It was, dude, to wake up and see that view, just the wide fucking open ocean every sure, morning. Sure, I saw pirates. <laughs> I saw a pirate ship full of pirates just fucking yeah. butt fucking each other, sail by us. <laughs> And I said, what are you? They said, we're looking for the booty. I said, hell, hell yeah, but fellas. And the, the, one of the craziest parts is we were cruising into uh, Jamaica, our perfect day, and we were still fucking Coco K was so fucking nice. Man. We were still 30, 40, 50 minutes away. Mm-hmm. Still good way. You couldn't even see it. And you look down below you and you could see all the way to the ocean floor. Yeah, that's how crystal clear the water is out there. No idea how deep it was right there. Yeah, I promise you, you will have a fucking great time. Go to your doctor, get some fucking Dramamine or whatever the hell that is if you get seasick. Or do the fucking little <clears throat> gay behind the ear patches. We're going to call Carissa. <laughs> hell yeah, let's, let's do it. Do it, it's so much fun. Let's get her on here and see what she has to say. About She's ready. She ready? Whoop, where? Hello? Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> What's up? Hi, Carissa. 
that was not a fancy cane. That was a fancy walker with its <laughs> feet about. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was a walker. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Nonetheless, either way, we wanted to. We you wanted were crippled to, and you made it. We, <laughs> we, Listen, apparently I still am. As of this past December, I got official diagnosis and I still made it. In that's what I'm saying, I, and you, and some people say, "Oh, you know, I don't know if I, I just don't." Well, Carissa, she had a fucking goddamn condition. She went and she was, yeah, she did wonderfully. <laughs> And she had a great time. She said, I would love to come on the show and tell everyone how amazing the cruise was. So, Carissa, was that your first uh, Was that your first cruise? Yes, that was definitely, that was my first cruise. It wasn't Matt's first cruise. He went on a Disney cruise before. Oh, that's not a real cruise. Back. Fucking can't hide money. Uh, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was definitely my first one. He had to talk me into it. I was so petrified of becoming seasick. Yeah. And I just I, I didn't want to deal with like vertigo and all of that. And I have to say, I didn't experience anything except for when the Asian persuasion had its breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were fucking cooking yeah, that. Yeah, I was I was fucking snoozing because we didn't have we got the cheap room. So there was no like windows or anything. So it was darker than <laughs> shit, which completely fucks with you. Like you have no idea what the perception of time is. But I, I woke up and I found Nick and he told me about it. And I'm like, God, yeah, I missed it. I'll, I'll kind of ex- ex- we had to go. We had to go from the middle of the ocean all the way back to port really quickly. Yeah, I was wondering because we were supposed to be a port whenever we docked that or whenever we woke up that morning. We were supposed to be a port already, and we were on our way back to Miami, I think, or we were had just left wow. Miami. One but or the, the other. The ship, they said it was going around six to seven times faster than it ever needs to go. Yeah. <laughs> and a, a few people that, that were motion sickness, they're like, oh, okay, if I can feel the boat moving. But beyond that, you couldn't feel the boat moving, and there was no, uh, there, you know, People that are worried about motion sickness or an upset stomach, they got little things you can put behind your ears. Just yeah. a little, uh, completely sublime sticker. Yep, you know, it's yeah. really subtle. You can't even really tell it's there. And it's it's a fucking party on water. And it's um, do you, do you, Chris? What was kind of maybe tell us about a couple of your favorite things about the cruise? I mean, obviously, aside from hanging out with us, obviously, <laughs> well, I mean, what was a couple of your favorite she things? She has before. One of the funnest parts, though, like just walking around the cruise ship. I'd see you guys. I'd just say hi. Hey, how's it going? And then we just kept walking on because, yep. like, I wanted to give you guys your vacation. I'm not going to sit there and be up your asses. <laughs> no, we, we encourage anyone to come in our ass. <laughs> So, yeah, I think I think that I was like that. I think it was like unanimous with everybody. Like once we all sat down that night and all had dinner in our little section together, I think like we all got a good look at who all was there for the group. And then anytime I would pass somebody, or I know like, anytime like me and Nick seen anybody, you know, it was like a, a tip of the hat, like you know, like hey guys, how how are you guys doing? And then we just fucking keep on going. Sometimes we'd sit there and talk a little bit longer, have some drinks or something. But it was you know it was cool to get a good idea of you know what all was going on and let everybody kind of do their own thing and just know that you're all kind of there together and for each other yeah it was it, that was one of the best parts is like <clears throat> i hung out with our author um lisa fidel i hung out with her the good majority of the time that we were there um we ate at all of the specialty restaurants because we got the package for oh yeah package to do that nice. we did the endless drink package so um <sighs> that first night Jersey Pete, I'm, I'm going to call him out right now, <laughs> got my husband rock and rolled. <laughs> rock and rolled. Was he drinking out of the Listerine bottle? <laughs> that wasn't Listerine. <laughs> he said maybe. <laughs> now, you uh, you mentioned the whole lot of Tom fuckery that night. <laughs> you mentioned the, uh, the drink package. People don't understand. Oh, my God. It's so yeah, there, important. There is a, a full service bar every 10 steps, and they are more than happy to make whatever you want. Am I mm-hmm. right? Yes. And there, they tried to say that there is like a cutoff of like 15 no. or 17 drinks. No. There's not. There is not. They, they will only cut you off if you are visibly intoxicated. Yeah, I shared. <laughs> We're trying to kill yourself. <laughs> I Matt's shared, back there. <laughs> I shared my brothers with his because he wanted to make sure that he got the money's worth out of his. So I was like, "Yeah, I'll just, I'll just use yours." And I got called out. So what people don't understand is like, you get like if you sit down for dinner, you get the same waiters and wait like the wait staff every single night. So after that first night, they learn your names. Yeah, and they work throughout the boat. They don't. They're not just like at one specific spot so i went and i used my brother's card at the bar next to the casino and the woman was like you're not mr allen where's mr allen <laughs> and i'm like shit 
one of my Got one me. of my one of my favorite parts was just the overall service. Did you feel like a queen or a princess when you were on there when you were on the boat, Carissa? Yes. Absolutely. It wasn't just on the boat. Whenever we got off, we went to Coco Cay. I was walking literally just down the pathway to get to the, like the swim up bar, and I had two different people stop me that worked on the boat, and it like come up to me and call me by name, like, "Hey, Carissa, how's everything going? How you know? Can I help you? Like, is there anything you need?" And I'm like, "Go enjoy your day off. That's what I need you to do." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're, they're never really off whenever they're on the island, but that's just, the whole thing. It was so much fun, and I'm like, the first time was really fucking great. Last year's was really great, but I want this time to be even better. You know, it's gonna what be I mean? better. It's gonna be so much more fun, I think. And everyone can get the details. You just go to brohiopodcast.com/cruise. All the details are there. And Carissa, you, I know you had the most amazing time. And oh, what? I absolutely did. And what would absolutely. you? What would you tell someone that's possibly on the fence about this? Maybe about the affordability and the experience overall. What What would you tell them? I mean, the experience is like I honestly I cannot wait to book our next cruise. Unfortunately, we're at a standstill right now just because custody wars and not being able to get children's passports signed. Understood. And I don't want to dump them off on my parents. But the best part of it, I mean you will never get an experience like that ever again in your life where you're basically treated like royalty, even though we all know that we're, we're, we're trash. We're not. Yeah. We're all we fucking white trash. <laughs> we talk about white trash. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to people, Chris, I mentioned something about, um, passports, but for this cruise that we're going on, yeah, going on, it's one. a, it's a closed loop cruise. So you do not need a passport. So if you're trying to factor that into your overall budget, you do not have to factor in if you're married, uh, if you're a woman who's married, you just need a, like a marriage certificate showing your change of name, I believe. And then you might need a birth certificate in your driver's license. And they normally just check your driver's license going in. But that's the at most what you need. You do not need a passport, so you don't have to factor in those extra fees. But, Krista, thanks for talking to us. Thank you. And we're, Anytime. We're, Anytime. We're bummed that you're not going to be here this time, but we'll definitely count on you next time. And oh, absolutely. You, absolutely. You send Matt all of our best and tell him we, we love him and we miss I'll him. I'm sure to lick his butthole for you guys. <laughs> Hell yeah, girl. <laughs> Better you than us. <laughs> Tear that cookie up. <laughs> all right. All right. I all right. love you guys. All right. Take love care. You guys. Love you too. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. That's Carissa, guys. Yeah. You heard it from her. She's and, never been on a cruise. And one thing I do also want to push out is like, this isn't like a. Um, uh, I want everybody to sign up for this cruise so that I can fucking line my pockets. No, it's not you know like I mean? that at all. It's not like that at all. Like, I really do think that if you guys are fans of us and fans of even like the, maybe the people that you've met in groups of ours, um, whether the secret group or you know anything, like if you've been in the community for a while, it's just it's a chance for everybody to you know brotherhood be, be closer get and the uh, neighborhood together yeah and just have like a big group of friends together and that's that's kind of what i like it to be that's what i want it to be it was a blast last time and i'm hoping to do it even bigger and better this time awesome well what it's going to be right now is a quick break oh, yeah. for three of our sponsors hopefully because if it's one two one or two it's not worth it for us to invest the time or the money but if it's three it's worth the money this is where we're lining our pockets Okay, hopefully it was three ads. Thank you. Now I was able to take a couple extra days off work because you guys listened to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you. All right. So you guys heard it. Uh, like we said, go to brohiopodcast.com slash cruise. But now let's get on with uh, some people that don't listen to us. Say, God damn, what the fuck? We'll get on. We're actually only at 15 minutes, which is I actually know. pretty good for we're, us. We're doing good. We're doing good. We're not doing an article. No, because I knew we were doing the There we go. So her. then that works perfectly. That, that, that average is out. Tonight we embark into the heart of Native American, Native American folklore. And if today at any point I say fucking Indians, I do not mean <laughs> that in a derogatory term or manner. Because the other, a few episodes ago, uh, ago a gay, a gay ago, <laughs> I said something, you know, and I made the, the real friend like fucking Indians. Oh, yeah. And I, you got a problem with Indians? <laughs> <laughs> no. We're talking about Native Americans. Oh, oh okay. Not not Seven Eleven. Whenever I was growing up, you'd say something about an Indian, and then you know your grandpa, or your dad, would be like, "Was well, it a feather or a dot?" <laughs> I had no idea what that meant growing up. God damn. It took me a, a while to figure that out. They say now these days it's either was it Seven Eleven or Nine Eleven. <laughs> oh my God! I'm like, God damn, dude, that's, that's not even the same those, ethnicity. Those people shouldn't be allowed to vote. <laughs> and 
This is Native American culture in this episode. All right. From the windswept plains to the shadowy depths of the forest, Native American culture is rich with captivating stories of spirits, monsters, and otherworldly beings that roam the earth when darkness falls. And many Native American tribes have rich and diverse folklore filled with captivating, sometimes eerie legends. Yeah. And that's what we're here to talk to you about tonight is the eerie fucking legends of some of these Native American tribes. Here's a few of the tribes, just real quick. Navajo. The Navajo Nation has a wealth of legends, including stories about skinwalkers, shapeshifters, uh, shapeshifting witches who are said to possess dark powers and prey on humans. Oh, yeah. Algonquian. And I, I looked up the pronunciations for all these tribes. That's a, that's a fun one. That's just how much respect I wish to pay to the Native American people, mm -hmm. their heritage, and everything that they're about. I, I typically... When we see a word we can't pronounce, well, we panic and we get it wrong. Oh, we right? just fucking swing for the fences. <laughs> this episode, I, I looked up a lot of these. So the Algonquians, this is a linguistic and cultural group that includes many tribes, such as the Miquoc, the Cree, and the Aljibwal. Aljibwal. Hell yeah. Aljibwal. Algonquian folklore features tales of wendigos and malevolent spirits associated uh, with cannibalism. Love some wendigos, man. In winter. Iroquois, the Iroquois Confederacy, easy there. <laughs> the Iroquois Confed Confederacy compromises <laughs> tribes like the Mohawk, the Seneca, the Onida, uh, the Onondaga, uh, Onondaga, and Cayuga. Their folklore includes stories about stone giants, Ooh. giant boners on those guys, <laughs> massive beings said to inhabit the forests and mountains. Then we got Cherokee. Good old. That's me. Cherokee Nation. I Cherokee some, tribe. I got some Cherokee in me. Do you? It's the only thing I know about my ancestry. You nasty bastard. Yeah. My grandma was like quarter Cherokee. Really? Yeah. Now she's dead. Well, <laughs> that tells you R.I.P. Yeah. That tells you. I didn't you even anything. get a casino or anything, dude. <laughs> it fucking sucks. The, uh, the Cherokees, they got stories about raven mockers. Oh, I look shit. those up. It's a sinister being that's said to stalk those nearing death, feeding off their suffering and pain. I know people like that. <laughs> yeah, they're live. They're on TikTok and shit. <laughs> Lakota. The Lakota people have legends about the Thunderbird, a powerful creature that <clears throat> controls the weather and is often associated with storms and lightning. And then we oh, have yeah, dude. the Inuit. Yeah. The Inuit people of the Arctic regions have tales of the Kualapalik, a water-dwelling creature that kidnaps children. Who wander too close to the shore. Love it. And it is subjective to determine which Native American folklore is more sinister than the other. A lot of these have varying degrees of how scary some of this shit is. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know what it is about Native American culture and Native American folklore, but it scares me. It rattles my nuggets more than anything else that we ever talk about. It does me too, and especially like in a lot of the... Um Stories that we have that even mention skinwalkers, like yeah. any, anything like that, like they they're so in tuned with like nature, and yeah. I feel like they just like know so much more that we just the fucking universe. forgot about stuff that we kind of dismiss. They're right. just in tune with different frequencies. <clears throat> they feel the vibrations of the earth, and they they they're all about spiritual energy and projection, and man. It, it, it leads you to it leads you to think that oh, maybe, uh, some of the stuff that they are quote unquote making legends about maybe mm -hmm. these are real things that uh, yeah. they're just aware of that we don't have any idea about. I mean, you would say that any legend has some sort of a hand in the truth. You know what I mean? At some absolutely something something made this story. The story didn't just fall out yeah. of thin air. Like you always say, you know, where there's smoke, there's typically fire. So yeah, especially for this. Uh, the concept of skinwalkers and Navajo folklore is often considered particularly unsettling because it involves the idea of humans using dark magic to transform into animals and inflict harm on others. Oh, so cool. The win the Wendigo stories from Algonquian uh, folklore are also deeply unsettling due to their association with cannibalism and the harshness of winter. Ooh. These creatures are ageless and they look for people on their deathbed. All of them kind of, they kind of all have this same, uh, there's one thing they have in common, just has to do with death and people dying. And the and I do want to circle back to the, 
the the Raven Mocker for just a second from Cherokee Nation. Mm-hmm. The uh, the Raven Mocker specifically, they look for people on their bet their deathbed, and they eat out the heart, not the vagina or the butthole. They eat out the heart, stealing the time they have left on Earth. The person's life force to add to their time. It's unknown how long they can go, f- uh, but maybe it's said that some of these creatures last. They live forever. They uh, the the Raven Mocker. They also harvest the body parts of the dead to replace their own decayed limbs. They look like extremely old people, so so old that the gender of whatever the Raven Mocker is is too hard to tell. But they are armed with a piercing scream, the ability to fly, and fingernails like surgical blades, and just as tough. This is why some old people who uh, who like look like they've been stitched many times. It's awfully often attributed to them possibly being a raven mocker. No. Oh. Yeah, this is from the Cherokee. This is from your people, you know, Cherokee Nation, Cherokee tribe. I'm a I'm a Bengals fan who hates the Ravens, so I'm often a Raven mocker. <laughs> yeah, my me kid too. my kids fucking love the Ravens and it's Why? <clears throat> because her brother loves the Ravens. Fuck him, man. I mean, they do have a fucking great ass quarterback. Ugly is all fucking hell. Dumber than a sack of rubber dicks. <laughs> Fast as Fuck, boy. Fast as fuck, boy. <laughs> Good-ass quarterback. He's though. an athlete, man. Yeah. If the Raven Mocker, uh, if they're disturbed in their life stealing, the, the process of their life stealing or feeding off of the heart, the person they attack becomes infected, and they eventually become Ooh. a Raven Mocker as well. Would you want to be one? Would you want to become infected? I don't want to be a Raven. That's how much of a diehard Bengals fan I really am. Nevermore. Nevermore. Quote the Bengal, nevermore. Now that we've talked at length, I'm sorry, over the years we have talked at length about Wendigos and Skinwalkers. While for my money, those are definitely the two scariest alleged creatures and the most prevalent creatures from Native American folklore, um, we uh, we don't have too much business to settle with those two guys because we've talked about those guys for, for many years. Mm-hmm. We've, give, we've kind of given them a lot of our, our time over the years. So we're going to talk about some other things. Hell yeah. From Native American folklore that can scare you or eat your penis. Dude, he fucking sold, dude. Speaking of eating penis. Yeah. That's what I came here for. There was a... <laughs> only reason I'm here today, dog. There was, a, uh, there was a list hanging up on our refrigerator. It's mm-hmm. a Paisley's Valentine's list, and it's got 20 people on it. It's all the kids from her class. Yeah. So they can write their Valentines. Mm-hmm. And there was some kid on there named Dylan, and I and next to Dylan in really nice black ink, it looked like almost print. I wrote the PP man. So I said, <laughs> <laughs> it said Dylan the PP man. <laughs> oh shit! And I kind of forgot about it because it's been up there for a while. But yeah. Paisley finally went to write her. <laughs> she did not write the PP man. <laughs> She probably went to write her Valentine's. And this is after dinner. We're all laying there like fat slugs. And she goes, Mom. And my wife's like, Yeah. And she said, Never mind. And Stacey's like, Okay. And then she starts staring at me. Paisley does. She starts staring at me. And then she waves me over. And I walk over there. I forgot about it. I love how she knows who to ask about it. <laughs> she, she was pointing like, mom will freak out she was pointing down the page she said i'm not allowed to write this <laughs> and i would just start playing i was like what she said this i can't i can't write this it's bad i said what's it say i can't read it and she said it's for dylan i said you can write dylan she says it says dylan the pp man <laughs> 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 fucking six year old. <laughs> uh, I said, fuck it, write it down if that's what he wants. That's what he prefers to be called. Hello, nasty fucker. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. How did their appointments go today? Dude. <laughs> oh, man. They're both. Paisley was under anesthesia, so. Yeah. She got caps and teeth pulled, and oh, my oh, God. Oh, she got them pulled too? She like got- baby teeth? She, her front tooth was loose, and they pulled that. Okay. And then uh, they gave her caps, and they st- did some other stuff and did this enamel buildup. And 
So she's upstairs. She just came home, had a bo- uh, had a bowl of ramen, and just straight to sleep. <laughs> I thought you said an edible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gave her an edible. <laughs> we gave, we gave yeah. her an eddy. <laughs> Go cook, baby girl. <laughs> Simmer. Yeah. And then my 11-year-old, she got braces put yeah, on. Yeah. She's fucking hating life Is right she? Now. Poor yeah. thing. I know that has to suck. She doesn't even want to talk. She's yeah. I didn't have them, but I've heard about how fucking my wife had them, and she always talks about how bad they sucked, Yeah, how bad it hurts. Well, she's finding out right now. Yeah, she's going to wake up with blood on her pillow tomorrow, I'm going to tell you that much. I remember her telling me that yeah. she woke up and her pillow would be covered in blood. $7,000. Jesus Christ. <laughs> These braces. Fuck. The oldest one got a Visalign. That was like four grand. Yeah. So, so I've got about... Could you the, not do that for... Was it... No, she's... Were her, they that her, bad? Her teeth are too narrow at oh, the bottom. okay. Yeah, you know, spread them apart. Okay. Damn, man. She's mad at me. I think. <laughs> she fucking hates you. <laughs> I think she's mad at me. <laughs> there goes your first car, baby girl. Yeah. <laughs> you have that in your mouth. Yeah. Oh, poor thing. Okay. Let's the Sorry. first. No, it's all right. I'm, I, <laughs> people like it when we talk about this stuff. Some people do. <laughs> That's why they love us. <laughs> my, heard... my wife had somebody. I'm sorry. My wife had somebody at her work. Is really nice girl. She was like. I try to listen to their show. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, just to be supportive for you, but it ain't worth it. It was 20 minutes in, and they hadn't even talked <laughs> about the subject. I just wanted to talk about the subject. <laughs> like, yeah, this isn't that type of show. Yeah, you got to get to about 15, and you're good. <laughs> and there's on. tangents. Let's get her on here. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. So why do you hate us? Yeah, tell us why. I want to get someone that really hates us yeah. to come on the show. Oh, that would be it. fun. Yeah, because we're nice guys. We wouldn't take any offense. Yeah, not at all. No, I, maybe there's someone out there that listens to us. You do fucking hate us, but we're just kind of part of your routine. Yeah, that's who we need. A spouse, like a, the spouse of a listener. Yeah, that's that's typically what it is. <laughs> okay, that's typically what it is. <laughs> the first, uh, the first person we're going to talk is not the guy from Batman, but Two Face or <laughs> AKA Sharp's Elbow. Damn, dude, Sharp's Elbow. That's, that's fucking that's sweet. Scary man. Oh yeah. The tribal affiliation, because you know they all got fucking. Uh, they all they got they're all clicked up and shit. All these scary ass motherfuckers. Tribal affiliation here is Omaha, Sioux, and the Cheyennes. And uh, the Sharp's elbow is a type of monster that Two Face is a malevolent humanoid monster of the Plains Indian tribes. In some tribes, Two Faces are described as ogres, but most often the Two Face resembles a human except for having a second face on the backside of his or whore, uh, yeah, his or whore, because there's only whores out there, <laughs> uh, head. If people make eye contact with a second face, they will either be struck dead or paralyzed with, fe- with fear until the two-face returns to murder them. In some traditions, there's only one two-face, female in some tribes and male in others, while other traditions suggest a whole race Got a whole fucking gaggle of Two Faces, dog. Hell yeah, man. The misdeeds of Two Face range from murdering and mutilating people to cannibalism mm-hmm. oh, hell yeah, to kidnapping or even just frightening, misbehaving children. In some Sioux legends, Double Face Woman uh, is to blame for childhood fits and night terrors. In Omaha mythology, it is a Two Face who kills the pregnant mother. Of the twin heroes, and this is a little story, kind of the backstory where the twin uh, of a possible encounter with a sharp's elbow or a, or a twin two faced. An Omaha woman was pregnant with twins. Before her husband went out hunting, he used to warn her, "If any strange person comes uh, comes here while I'm out, just don't look at him. You could be in danger." Hmm. One day, an old man came to the lodge. <laughs> While the man was hunting and the woman sat with her back to him, she didn't look at him. He came back the next day and she still had not looked at him. On the third day, he came back to the lodge again, but the woman still would not look at him. But on the fourth day, when he came back, she couldn't stand it anymore and she peeked. She saw a two face, a man eating ogre. Everyone who looked at him died. The Omaha woman died as soon as she laid eyes on him, and the Two-Face cut her up and ate her on the spot. Oh, that's so fucking hot. That's a full-ass meal, dog. God damn. He took one of her babies out of her body and threw it into the woods. (laughs) I didn't want to deal with a fucking kid. Washed it. (laughs) Fuck, dude. More than he bargained for. I thought about doing the same fucking thing to mine. (laughs) I think I tried once. (laughs) But he didn't notice the other baby. Mind you, there was twins there. Oh, man. 
When the woman's husband came back and saw her remains, he knew what had happened. He started to grieve. But then he noticed the baby was still alive, so he'd better take care of him. <laughs> he, didn't, yeah, yeah. He, he didn't know there were two babies. The other one was still in the woods. Fucking <laughs> splattered against a tree somewhere. <laughs> Poor a thing. fucking bean moose adopted him and fed him <laughs> on beans. <laughs> That baby just shitting itself to death, living on, <laughs> living on beans, fucking beans, living off. I lived off Taco Bell bean burritos for Dude. two days. <laughs> Fuck it, I, I think I could live off beans. That was a grisly murder. Yeah, what I'd done. <laughs> so the first twin grew up wild. When the twins got older, they met one another again and knew they were. Uh, they knew they were brothers. They grew up to become <laughs> heroes and have many adventures together. But that is another story for another day. So uh, moral of that story, if you have a baby you don't want, you just throw it in the woods. <laughs> fucking yeet it out the fucking window. And you should always check for another baby in case there's more than one. What about the old Guacua? Have you heard of the Guacua before? <laughs> no, I have not. <laughs> I definitely haven't. The Guacuas are the evil man-eating ice giants of Ugh. southern Wabanaki legends. That's so fucking cool. An yeah. ice giant up there by Nova Scotia, baby. Oh yeah, up there above Maine. According to most legends, a Gawakwa was once a human being who either became possessed by an evil spirit or committed a terrible crime, especially cannibalism or withholding food from a starving starving person or child, causing his heart to turn to ice. In some Abenaki legends, the stone giants were not transformed humans, but primordial man-eating monsters defeated by the culture, uh, the culture hero, Glascavi. And mm. I'm at the part in I Game put, of Thrones. I put that shit in my, um, I eat that with sushi <laughs> and soy sauce. Glascavi, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, fucking, it's really fucking good. Careful with that stuff, though, <laughs> brother. That'll, don't put it in your dick. That'll heat you up. That'll heat you up. Game of Thrones. Uh, I'm at the part. I'm wrapping up season four right now, I think. Okay. Uh, it's still good then. I have one episode left. The last episode I watched. So you're, you're you're fucking nuts deep into Joffrey right now. Joffrey's, he's no longer a part of the show. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> How satisfying was that? Oh, that was good. <laughs> you know, to this day, he's still voted as the most hated character on any show ever. Has to be. He was awful. <laughs> and I was... So I don't I don't know what happens after the, the episode I'm on. I um, I just finished it. So they're doing the the duel for uh, the midget Tyrion yeah. to you? see if he lives. And then the guy that his champion gets a fucking head caved. That was can a we, gnarly scene. Can we talk? Because I think this was in season two. Can we talk about how fucking good the Red Wedding is? Oh, that's such a while. So fucking good. <laughs> so good. Like all hell breaks loose, dude. Whenever he. Whenever she saw his sleeve pulled up and that armor, I, sh I shrieked when I fucking oh, yeah. heard when I was watching that. Yeah, I was like, I was. So what I do is I put it on my phone. And I go stand in the backyard mm -hmm. and I put on my noise canceling headphones and I'll play frisbee with Pepper for an hour or two. Yeah, and throw and watch that. Yeah, and I'll sit in a chair and throw it and I'll watch <sighs> it. And I was like, I stopped. I was like, <gasps> Oh my god! And then they just killed everybody, <laughs> dude. Everybody's everyone's getting up dart or a sword yeah. it, it almost hurts like it almost hurts your heart that was like, the first that was one of the first pieces of television that i f that i fucking felt the last time that i felt something yeah was a uh, mandalorian when luke skywalker uh showed up and took the took the child that was like <clears throat> i was yeah. out of my body but it's been a long time since i felt something like that watch a television mm -hmm. show and i felt that i was like oh Man. my god I'll tell you who I, who am I, I don't know, you know, I don't know what happens to him, if he lives or if he mm -hmm. dies. My favorite character so far is the Hound. I really, Dude, I really like him. Love, He's such a fucking cool character. Love the Hound. Yeah. Have you gotten into, I don't, see, I don't remember what happens in the season. Have you gotten into Hodor yet? Hodor, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Didn't I say, oh, fuck. <laughs> you see him naked? <laughs> Dude, his dick is like eight feet long. <laughs> I forgot that you watched it too. I sent yeah. that I sent that screenshot to a bunch of people because everyone there was a lot of people cheering me on. Like, mm -hmm. Hey man, good job watching Game of Thrones. I'm so excited for you, man! And then it's I so good. I get like the one episode where Hodor is naked. I said, "What the fuck is this shit?" He's just a yeah. Uh, he got a huge dong, dude. It's so fucking good. Yeah, I'm a 
to keep going. You're going to get in some even you're getting some wild shit here the next couple seasons. I know. Last season sucks dick, but the rest of the um, seasons it's it's paid enough. It's paid off already, even if the last that's, season's bad. That's the way that I see it. Like the the last season up, I think the seven they do seven seasons. Eight, I eight. Think. Okay, yeah, the eighth season's bad. Seven, seven's good. So up until okay. you get to the last season, it's it's pretty good. I think they all follow the book up until the very last season. Okay. I will tell you that there's none of this in Game of Thrones, and that's Bush. Those, <laughs> everyone's pretty cleanly shaven. God bless them. <laughs> yeah, but Bush Bush Indians are hairy wild men. <laughs> Perfect segue, right? Hell yeah. I think that's what I am. <laughs> I'm a Bush Indian. I'm a Bush Indian. That sounds like a slur. I feel like you shouldn't be able to say that. <laughs> you know what I hate? I hate those fucking Bush Indians. <laughs> Like, it sounds like a slur. You're in the break room at work, and you hear some guy like, I told my fucking daughter she brought home another Bush Indian. I was going to ground her and take away her. I was going to take away her Insta Snap. I'm tired of this goddamn shit. I like you use a southern accent almost anything sounds that are racist, though. <laughs> Let's get into the Bush Indians. Okay, everything sounds racist when you use a southern accent. Really I went to my boy's house, and he bought a goddamn black lab. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to buy a yellow one either. Those, those, those fuckers took out Pearl Harbor. They're scared. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, so they took out Pearl Harbor. My wife made some goddamn brown rice last night. <laughs> I don't even trust Dalmatians. <laughs> what are they? <laughs> pick, pick a side. <laughs> pick a side. <laughs> Flip the coin, commie. <laughs> He's 50% good dog. <laughs> oh, man. They will never rise again. I wonder if they know that yet. <laughs> Fucking idiots. <laughs> oh, man. Got rid of all those statues, though, didn't we? <laughs> Fuck yeah, we did. <laughs> Fuck them. White people, man. Yep. <sighs> Bush Indians are very aggressive and often features. They're, uh, they're kind of portrayed as boogeymen in stories to, that are told to children in, in the Native American folklore, sometimes kidnapping or even eating unweary, ch unweary children. So next time your kids are getting out of line, you say, hey, <laughs> we are not too far away from having a Bush Indian run up in this motherfucking house <laughs> and massacre, man, everybody in here. I had a pretty interesting run in with a Bush Indian, not a Bush Indian, but a Southerner. Okay. Over the weekend, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to save it because we're already just so far off the. <laughs> save it for the end of the episode, but it's okay. good. It was a bathroom encounter, so it's ooh, it's even better. A plus. Yeah, you, some, have, you have the best bathroom. Some encounters. of my tomfoolery that I pulled over the weekend. <laughs> How about water babies? You know, <laughs> man, let's, where do I get started? <laughs> That's what my kids are. They're all fucking water babies. <laughs> Imagine hearing a young child crying hysterically in the woods in the middle of the night. Going to investigate, you see a baby floating in the middle of a pond, desperately thrashing around, <laughs> fuck, instinctively in an attempt to keep itself from drowning. Being an average human, you decide it needs saving, and you dive in after the baby to save it. After a short swim to save the child... You notice that it has, in fact, stopped crying. Oh, shit. When you suddenly feel something wrap around your ankle. Oh, it's like a fucking kangaroo. It then proceeds to drag you under the water until you drown. Oh, man. You ever know about this one? No. It's my water baby. When your water baby's doll is filled with warm water, it seems to come alive in your arms. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, I've never seen a fucking doll that's less alive than that fucking thing. We're going to do it again. It's on YouTube. If you guys want to watch it, we got it on the live stream here. <laughs> it's my water baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cute baby. That is a really cute baby. It's my, my water, water baby. baby. When your water baby's doll is filled with warm water, it seems to come alive in your arms. I'm gonna fill your mom full <laughs> of warm water. <laughs> it feels like a real baby when you fuck it. Water baby's doll from Playmates. Playmates, hell yeah. 
<laughs> that goes to a pure country playlist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to get fucking copyrighted. Copyrighted. We got Hell a whole, yeah. We got pure country. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. 90s country's about to play. We're about to start vibing, dog. We had a water baby when I was a kid. <laughs> my mom used to beat it up just to practice beating our asses. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mom was what you, you typically wouldn't give birth to those back in the 80s it's and 90s. A- <laughs> <laughs> it's a water baby. <laughs> Let's hit the fucking... I think my dad thinks I'm a water baby. <laughs> Let's hit the cancel button on this one. <laughs> no shit, man. I don't care. I was listening to Two Bears, One Cave, and I, you know, I don't yeah. listen to a lot of podcasts. Dude, they fucking let it fly, man. They're, <laughs> they're awful. If they're still around, then I think we can manage also. Cause so here's, here's the thing is like, we'll be, <laughs> comedy is on, it's on a past the pc time and it's on the revamp era i think so yeah. so everything's fucking gay and like all, the, all this shit like dropping the r word and and yeah it's it's coming back around shane gillis buddy yeah, he's, <laughs> he's man oh man and reno nevada is is pyramid lake where the water babies live <laughs> Water baby, <laughs> <laughs> it's my water baby. This sounds like a slow kid, you know. Yeah, every spring, at least one fisherman disappears, and their bodies are never found. The disappearances are blamed on fucking water babies. <laughs> it's so stupid. The water babies are said to be disfigured or premature. <laughs> Listen to this, Robert. <laughs> Listen to this, Robert. Okay. The water babies are said to be disfigured or premature babies that were thrown into the lake. Oh, fuck. By an Indian tribe. Oh, God. It's said that the angry baby spirits have taken over the Pyramid <laughs> Lake and that the cries or laughter of small children can be heard all oh, around. In Pocatello, Idaho, Massacre Rocks, the legend of the area says that one year a long time ago. Oh, man. A terrible, acute illness overtook the land of Shoshone Indians. They could not feed themselves, neither could they feed any new mouths. The Shoshone Indian mothers were forced to drown their newborn babies in the local rivers and lakes during that time, thus giving birth to (laughs) water babies. Dude, if I ever get taken out by a premature baby... (laughs) I swear I wasn't fit to live on this planet. Oh, you got beat up by a, by a baby? Was it a regular baby? Oh, no. It was a fucking water baby. It was a fucking preemie. <laughs> Here's on the boat news here. <laughs> dude, uh, dude, we're leaving. <laughs> Fuck that, dude. I'm putting this on a playlist. <laughs> It's a water baby. <laughs> My computer's fucking froze up. Piece of shit. <laughs> Calendar stopped working, and now I can't even close the fucking app. Everything's froze up. It's not worth it, dude. No. That thing needs to go anyways. <laughs> oh, I got to piss. Let me go piss real quick. All right, cool, man. You got it. <laughs> you going to go make a water baby? We should fill up a water baby full of piss and send it to somebody. What's up, YouTube? Uh, King Robert's going to urinate. Your mom is a water baby. You got that right, Ryan, buddy. (laughs) Yeah, so... um, My parents had a water bed growing up. You got to think about the core strength it took. The core strength it took our parents to make love on a waterbed and how they just had to fight through to make us on a water on a waterbed. Pure strength. Pure power. Robert has to pee and I'm gonna pee too. Please send me Rob's piss. Someone wants us to send uh, them your piss. <laughs> oh yeah. How you guys everybody doing? Oh man. 
Yeah, that water baby just went right down the toilet, guys. Sorry. Um, a water bed, dude. Yeah, I, I had a water bed for the longest as a kid. My parents always got pissed because there'd be crayons and shit under it. It'd always spring a leak. So I'd fucking <laughs> fall asleep with toys in my hands, and the toys would end up going underneath there and food and yeah, it was rough. Yeah, I got beat <laughs> severely for it. Hell yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, definitely look into the cruise, guys. It's going to be a fucking blast. I cannot wait. It just sucks that it's seven months away. But until then, hopefully we can get out to fucking Texas, do some more live shows. I'm excited. Love it. My favorite thing. It's my water, baby. <laughs> it is, man. <clears throat> I missed out on that. So everybody was going through this thing of like fucking uh, 90s toys. Like, remember these? Blah, blah, blah. And it was like all these girly things. And I'm like, nope. nope no, I wasn't a bitch. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. <clears throat> Good. Somebody in the YouTube chat was talking about water beds. And I just yeah. want to, I commend our parents. I was just talking about that in the chat. Because they can they conceived us on water beds. Mm-hmm. And the core strength and stability it would take mm-hmm. to have fucking um, sex that made another human on a water bed yeah. from start to finish. Yeah, I had a hand me down water bed. Oh man. And that was rough. There was a um so up top by the headboard where you'd normally sleep, it was really fucking hard for some reason. But at the very foot of the bed it was nice and soft. So I laid at the foot of the bed really? every fucking night, yeah. And I'd always drop crayons and fucking Power Rangers and shit down there and spring a leak and get beat and all this shit. Yeah, it was it was fucking great, man. Did you guys have hard water? This was I don't think so. There's the softer water than yeah, it, it was we, hard just, water at the top. It was just weird because it was like fucking the up top was like the bottom, which you would think that not a lot of people have laid on. It was so fucking soft, man. <laughs> That's where our parents fucked. <laughs> I don't know. I would say a water bed <clears throat> probably wears pretty evenly. You would think. <laughs> I'm fucking I don't up. know. <laughs> it's a big Ziploc bag full of water. I mean, it really is. It's a wild thing that we that, you know. The eighties was fucking wild, man. Mm. It had to have been the eighties. Mm. I'm gonna finish talking about the water babies. Right there. <laughs> Let's fucking go, dude. Should you? Is there a ten hour loop of the water babies theme song? We can make one. <laughs> we can generate one for Put sure. Put it underneath. Um. <clears throat> yeah. So these fucking Indians, if he couldn't feed these babies, they'd drown them. Hell yeah. Long story short, been there. Yeah, and. It said the babies, they once they were thrown in the water, they grew tails and fins and gills. <laughs> Fuck. They survived the famine by feasting on tadpoles and small fish. <laughs> Fuck yeah, So there's just a bunch of water babies swimming around eating frogs and shit. <laughs> Fucking fish sperm. These spirits can be seen <clears throat> playing in the canals and rivers around the Shoshone Binoc Reservation. Their laughter can be heard as they attempt to sneak and lure unsuspecting humans to their death. The Shoshone tribe seems to be the most common Native American connection to water babies. And it is no exception here. However, their tale and the tale of the local white man differ. It's said that the angry spirits of these dead water babies have overtaken the lake. Man. Every year they find an unsuspecting white man. And drag him to his doom. Use your fucking white privilege on that one. Use your <laughs> use your card, buddy. Sign me up. Their anger keeps them alive, and they will not stop at <laughs> anything to exact their revenge. Hold on a second. I want you, I want to restart this just okay. one more time. It's only thirty seconds. You okay. guys will be okay. But I want you to pretend that they're talking. They're singing a song about my scrotum. Water, baby. 
Grammys. Sounds Hell yeah, good, man. What's fucking Corky? <laughs> Oh, oh hell, God, dude. What a... damn, he's fucking scary, dog. <laughs> Scott, my name's... I don't like it. My name's Corky. <laughs> Fuck. Drown that thing. It's not only a water baby. While we're drowning babies, <laughs> let's drown that one, too. Another cool one I learned about was stick Indians. <laughs> All these sound so racist. I don't know. Yeah, man, they do, but they're not. They're definitely not. They got a little twang to them, for sure. <laughs> In the traditions of Salish and other Northwest Indian tribes, stick Indians are extremely dangerous forest spirits described as large, hairy, Bigfoot-like creatures by the Salish and as uh, forest dwarves by the Kyus and Yakama. Hell yeah, man. Japanese gangsters, right? Japanese gangster tribe. Oh, it's Yakuza. <clears throat> My bad. Stick Indians have powers to paralyze, hypnotize, or cause insanity in helpless humans while in others, they merely lead people astray by making eerie sounds of whistling or laughter in, in the woods at night. In some stories, stick Indians may eat people mm. who fall prey to them, kidnap children, yes. or molest women. Oh, fuck. They done did it now. If you're out there molesting <clears throat> women, you are uh, something else. I'll mm. tell you that. I... Had one of those conversations with my wife last night. Mm -hmm. I said, either you are going to have to give in to me right now. <laughs> yeah. Or I, I'm going to take you. <laughs> I'm going to take your body. I'm going to take what's mine. You are my prize. My property. You're f I paid my family, paid a lot of money to your family for you. Yeah, man. And that's another thing about Game of Thrones is all those arranged marriages and just being forced to marry someone that you don't even fucking like. It's wild. It's crazy that the world used to operate like that. Yeah. If you're married to someone you hate, send us an email, brohiopodcast at gmail.com. <laughs> Boy, we're going to get so many emails on that one. <laughs> you know what we said? I guess we said something about flushing tampons because we got a few women that wrote us and said, I don't give a fuck. I flush my tampons. <laughs> so <laughs> wild ass bitches. <laughs> I don't know if she sent you the picture, but my wife sent me a picture when we were at the uh, our son's basketball game. Definitely didn't send me a picture. Okay. <laughs> there was in the women's bathroom. There was a someone fucking stuck a pad to the side of the toilet paper roll thing. Oh, <laughs> dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's so gross. Oh, gross. Like, it's like it goes to my thing. Like as like we talked about before. Like dudes are fucking nasty, but women can be vile. Well, there's a lot of women that are infinitely more clean than than most women. For sure, but the dirty ones are fucking dirty. I just don't. It makes you wonder what the the butt piece of a thong smells like sometimes. I might smell. <laughs> <laughs> Some of those women, they get paid to just walk around and fart and shit themselves and sell them drawers. I know, man. We're in the wrong business. <clears throat> I know. Think we you ever smell our drawers? <laughs> no. No way. I can't, I can't afford shipping out my fucking underwear and buying a coffin. <laughs> I'm in a very weird spot because I know that sometimes when I'm, I got my eating habits tuned in mm -hmm. and I'll fart or shit. Yeah. It doesn't stink. But when I'm eating cheese steaks and onions and burgers and I shit or fart, it's enough to kill someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when I'm tuned in, I'm like, is this what a normal person smells like? Is, this, is, is everyone around me farting and I just don't know it? Or, and you know, I've been taking some, I've been using a little bit of protein powder. I've got mm -hmm. some uh, uh, ghost, uh, ghost nutter butter and Cinnabon. They both taste really good. I okay. recommend those. And I, I, we had, you and I mentioned some, maybe some nutritionists mm -hmm. or personal trainers. Yeah. Man, we probably had. A hundred people reach out. Really? And I know a lot of you are saying, oh, I, I put it out there. I'm not, I haven't heard back from these guys. Well, well kind of where we're, and I've just really been working on the foundations of weightlifting. Just my, my major lifts and kind of getting to the point where I can go into a program. Mm -hmm. Because right now I'm just trying to do the building blocks. It's it's getting a lot better. Yeah. I did eject my spine out of my butthole doing deadlifts the other day. And oh, I, was, man. I was hurt for about <clears throat> a week. Yeah. And then on top of that, I hurt my fucking back deadlifting, and I woke up the next morning, and uh, uh, fucking Toby Keith had died. That's so, so fucking rough, man. I didn't want to move. Legend. Who's your daddy? <laughs> Who's your baby? That's pretty fucking good, Who's dude. Who's your buddy? Who's your friend? <laughs> Who's the one man that you come running to? Yeah, my thing, I, I need to get on a sustainable diet. That's, that's the thing, like. 
Well, I get into a mode. I still got a good metabolism, luckily. But yeah, if you if you tuned in your diet, if you started tracking your calories, yeah, and people was like this diet, that diet, this diet, it all boils down to you have to burn less calories than you take in, in a day. Absolutely. And a good starting point for you know, I'm fucking big, so I burn a lot more calories. But for you know, a normal average sized person, you need your body around 2000 2, calories a yeah. day. Yeah. And you got to fine tune that. And the 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 magic key there, you want to say, "Oh, I want a burger, but it's going to put me over 300 calories, whatever." Well, the magic key there is exercise because you yeah. can go hop on a, an elliptical swimming. <clears throat> I went swimming for some cardio. My God, I swam for 30 minutes. It was about 750 calories. Yeah. I'm I'm totally up for portion control and shit like that. My thing is, is like, I don't want to be because. So if you're on one of these crazy diets, that's the thing is that it's so hard to sustain that diet. Right. I don't want to be. I want to if I want to go get a burger that night. I want to be able to fucking <clears throat> go get it. I just don't want to. You know, cardio doesn't do shit. So let's see, because you're fucking going, do, just doing cardio. Next time you eat, that shit's re- getting replaced with whatever the fuck you're eating. So I mean, cardio burns calories. It burns calories, but those calories are replenished the next time you fucking eat. So yeah, but you're it, not fucking doing it anything. It goes into your your body naturally just burns calories all day. Sure, but you burn more if you exercise. True, Even you're like your resting metabolic. Well, whenever you're sleeping, you're burning more calories if you're lifting weights and working out and stuff. Do I do that when I'm sleeping? So I'm good. <laughs> Lift weights. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have any fucking blankets I have to sleep with because my wife. Yeah, dude, that's those fucking wild. things are wild, Look, heavy. Luckily, my wife she's frozen, so we we <laughs> we sleep with. Yeah, it's cold in our room. I need to get back to working out. Cold, cold. I'm down there at Empower, man. I'm waiting for you. I get on that squat rack and I'm like, <laughs> I make noises and stuff like I'm doing big, big shit. Can we get in the boxing ring? Dirt! Yeah. <laughs> fucking spar, dog. Uh, you guys aren't supposed to be on the top rope. <laughs> fucking <laughs> flying elbow drops and shit. <laughs> Devon, get the table. <laughs> We're just grabbing little fucking little people in there and just 3D in them and shit. Yeah. Dude, that's so hot. Mm. Let's do it. What would our tag team name be? <laughs> Lex and Bert. I, I, gotta, <laughs> I don't know. I don't the know st- either. The Stick Indians. <laughs> the Stick Indians. Water Babies. Water Babies. <laughs> the Water Babies. And we come out just dripping wet. <laughs> <laughs> we wear diapers. We just get fucking it's totally wet. We get oiled up and watered down. We wear diapers <laughs> after the ring. <laughs> From the Bronx, New York. <laughs> By way of Dayton, Ohio, the water babies with a diaper full of shit. <laughs> dude, that's hot, dude. Well, in our special, we got to have a special move, like a finisher. We got to have a. I feel like it have to. One of them have to be the stink face. The stink face, yeah. Yeah, that, that one's been used. That's true. Um, hmm, what could we do? I don't know. I don't know. Let's think about it and circle back. Let's do it. The uh, so the the stick Indians. They may eat people who fall prey to them, uh, and they also molest women. Not ideal. They also take aggressive revenge against people who injure or disrespect them. So don't do that to a to a stick Indian. Please don't. Not too many traditional uh, legends regarding stick Indians have been recorded in part due to taboos related to these deadly creatures. Stick Indians is an English euphemism saying the actual Salish names of these beings in public is considered to be provoking their attacks in some tribes. A belief many Native uh, Native American people still adhere to today, choosing to refer to them only in English. So you can't use their government name or they'll <laughs> fuck you up. Yeah. Another fun one I read about, Rob, flying heads. Oh, dude, fuck yeah. Let me get some flying head. <laughs> Speaking of flying heads, you see uh, Steve Stone Cold in the mullet uh, commercial. I don't don't think I did. Dude, that was a good one. That was man, one. Kawasaki dude it was a Kawasaki yeah. commercial. Dude, good. I started tuning out. Man, I I, yeah. I lost interest in that game big time. The flying head legend is the most popular in Iroquois and Wyandot culture. Flying heads are thought to be produced from cannibals or from battles wherein people have physically lost their heads. Flying heads are giant, ravenous heads with neck length hair. It's just a fucking head the size of a car floating around. God damn, dude. Some descriptions have them with bat wings. <laughs> Did you ever seen a head with bat wings? Ah! <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, they have bat wings, and they're said to have an uh, insatiable hunger leading them to eat cats and people. Fuck. I made the cat part up, but nonetheless, (laughs) no man-made weapon can kill them. (laughs) Holy fuck, you can't even nuke them. You know the only way to kill a flying head? Uh, What's that? Is to make it eat, is to feed it hot coal. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, hell yeah, dude. No, you you can't feed it to him. You got to trick him into eating hot coal. (laughs) How does one even do that? <clears throat> hey, buddy. <laughs> I got a big old chalky piece of charcoal over here for you. A boy stands with his grandmother, and she leaves every day to find food. Before she goes, she reminds him never to go in a particularly particular direction. Naturally, the boy grows bored and one day heads off in the forbidden direction. A disembodied voice asks him what he would do if it rained forks. Yes, forks. Uh. Probably get fucking stabbed in the head. Absolutely nothing. (laughs) It's raining forks. (laughs) The boy thinks it's a joke and laughs, saying that he'd saying they'd they'd run away. But his grandmother doesn't find it funny. A storm rises, and as promised, it rains forks. The boy and his grandmother shelter under a stone, but their teepee is lost. The boy doesn't learn his lesson and heads in the forbidden direction the following day. This time, the voice promises manure. And again, the boy tells that uh, he would run away if it rained shit. <laughs> Lo and behold, <laughs> it begins to rain poop. As before, th- the boy and his grandmother shelter under the stone. A third instance occurs, but the raining material has been lost to posterity. The boy tires of the head's ways and decides to get revenge. He sets out but follows a circular route, so he approaches where he heard the voice from a different direction. The boy speaks first, asking the voice how it would like it if the wind blew all the trees down. He spots the head up on top of a tree, which expresses its dismay as the, at the boy and wishes for high winds. The wind rises and breaks the branches of the trees, leaving the head homeless. The head Aww. disappears, and the boy and his grandmother return to their lives. Another story explains the head grew uh, grew afraid of humans after seeing a woman eating coals. You ever had any homeless head before? I got a wild bitch. You did this wild bitch back in the day. <laughs> She'd eat coal, dude. Yeah. And one of the um, one of those girls ate, <laughs> ate coal on a, on a Facebook Live video a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, there was a young lady that we went to school with, and she made a Facebook Live video of her <laughs> drinking antifreeze. I don't, I don't know. And, and, you know, they're I'm wa- going through some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've never gone through that shit. I feel like drinking <laughs> antifreeze is a way of like, hey, you got to look. I'm going to kill myself. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I really hope she got the help that she needed. Mm-hmm. And, but that could not have, that had to have tasted yucky, honestly. Yeah. I'm sure she didn't overheat. I remember one time growing up, we were having a lot of problems with this cat that kept on shit on our front porch. Mm-hmm. And these cats would come on our front porch and shit and piss all over the place. And one day, my dad got up and put some antifreeze on the front porch. I was like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> so I'm feeding the cats. <laughs> God damn. Fuck. <laughs> well, Dad. <laughs> I don't think that's. A, I don't that's think it worked. I don't, I don't think it worked, but um, that bet, bet them cats stopped shitting on the porch, though. <laughs> yeah, the, the porch <laughs> stopped smelling like cat piss and shit after that. I don't know. <laughs> Coincidence? I don't know. Yeah, well, that's a way to go. I, <laughs> I, but the girl we went to school with, she did live. Thank God, and hopefully she's got the help she needs. You know, she tried to, she tried to come to my house a lot of times whenever mm-hmm. we were younger. And I said, no way, Jose, are you coming over? That is crazy. And then she started telling me all the things that she was capable of doing. And I said, no way, Jose, are you coming to my house? She was a lady of the night, wasn't she? She was a lady of the night. I thought so. She was a streetwalker. I never paid for anything from her. Yeah. Flash forward 20 years, and she's drinking antifreeze under a bridge. Damn, ma'am. Talk about your all-time backfires. I thought it was bad just fucking going out on weekends drinking beer. God damn, could be worse. People see, you know, people from our alumni probably see us and say, this is the lowest common denominator <clears throat> right here. Sure. Even. So separates us from water babies. <laughs> we are water babies. 
You live you you <laughs> fucking lived over there by the river for a while. You, I did, man. You know all about them water babies. Oh uh, yeah, I've seen some deformed people over there. <laughs> <laughs> There's some fucking shit growing There's in that some water. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. All right, now we're going to talk about the Uctena. The Uctena, many cultures worldwide tell tales of giant serpents. Ooh, nice. And ain't no giant serpents in this room, if you know what I'm talking about. Negative. Some girl wrote in the Facebook, um, we, have a, we have a super secret Facebook group called Butt Chuggers Anonymous. Shh, don't tell anybody. Bro Ohio po- the Bro Ohio podcast, Butt Chuggers Anonymous, and the password is Bill Wilkins. You'll need that to get in. But she said, I like it when Nick and Rob talk about their small dicks. And then she pretty much left it at that. And I don't know what that was supposed to mean. I don't know. <laughs> Some women Back don't like being hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some women. I find the small oh, ones yeah. cute. Some women don't like being hurt. And some men like knowing that they're not alone. <laughs> some guys like being degraded, too. So that's a that's a thing. Yeah, dude. I had a, I had a family member who was in prison for a while. Mm-hmm. And I uh, love the dude. Su- super tight with him. But there for a while, he was making money mm-hmm. insulting gay men on, like, uh, video chat. They really? Would, they would get up, these fucking weird dudes would go on there naked, and he'd say, you got the nastiest looking little shrimp dick, <laughs> and he'd just talk trash to them. Dude, that's a good way to get paid, man. And he'd man. degrade them. Yeah. And he'd tell them their buttholes were nasty <laughs> and stuff, or he'd say, you know, you <laughs> Nice hemorrhoid, you fucking loser. Yeah, you got fat tits. You know, just whatever you say to a man to degrade him. And they're just, like, coming? Yeah. Oh, that's hot. Yeah, the, the, the thing that used to... I've never really been too upset uh, about much, but when I worked in the prison system, there was this one inmate, and I always had to... I was always chasing this fucker around, dude. Mm-hmm. He was always running around, causing trouble, and I was always on his ass. And he always used to say, I bet you got picked on a lot in school. I'm like, motherfucker, I had a lot of friends in school. I never got picked on. I picked on people. And that always get under my skin, and that's a good. And I think I said this before. That's a if you're ever getting a, if you're on a traffic stop, cops love when you say that shit to them. Yeah, I bet you beat your wife, don't you? <laughs> Which one do you beat harder, your partner's dick or your wife, your dog? <laughs> you beat your dog too. I bet you got picked on in high school. Cops love that shit. Dude. That's a surefire way to get out of a ticket. Mm-hmm. Try it. Um. Living, yeah, these serpents, uh, they can be found in Native American folklore. Along uh, Among them is the myth of the Utena. The legend of the Utena originated among Cherokee Nation of the southeastern U.S. It is essentially a dragon-like horned serpent with wings. God damn. Mm. But some uh, depictions are far more unnerving. The 19th century anthropologist, this is a fun story, James Mooney, observed the Cherokee tribe in western North Carolina and described the Actena the in his 1992 book, History, Myths, and Sacred Formulas of the Cherokees. And then the book he wrote, Those who know say that the Actena is a great snake as large around as a tree trunk Damn. with horns on its head and a bright blazing crest like a diamond upon its forehead and scales glittering like sparkles, uh, sparks of fire. The blazing diamond is called Olin Sutai, transparent, and he who can win it may become the greatest wonder worker of the tribe. Still, it is worth a man's life to attempt it, for whoever is seen by the Actena is so dazed by the bright light that he runs toward the snake instead of trying to escape. According to Mooney's research, the only warrior ever believed to successfully retrieve the blazing Uctena diamond and live to tell the tale was Agan Unitsi, the diamond he had obtained was allegedly still in possession of the East Cherokees during Mooney's visit to the tribe in 1992. Hmm. However, as a white man and outsider, the researcher was not allowed to see the diamond. Oh, that sucks. According to the Cherokee legends of this Native American monster, the first Uctena was made long ago when the sun sent a sickness down to kill the people on Earth. A man was changed into a horned snake and sent to kill the sun. Goddamn, bitch! Ooh. He failed, but the rattlesnake tried next and succeeded. The Actena was so jealous and angry about his failure that all people were afraid of him, so they took him away from the tribe and hid him in the woods. In other tales, these horned serpents are born out of envy and angry and represent the darkness of the underworld. Legend has it the Actena lives in isolated dark places like gorges, caves, and robs butt in lonely passes in the high mountains. Like my butt? <laughs> 
<laughs> Your ass can get lonely in the mountains, dude. Your ass can get lonely, <laughs> Rob's butt. <laughs> lonely as a motherfucker in here. <laughs> Generations of Cherokee passed on the knowledge of possible Uctena dwellings, so members of the tribe could avoid these dangerous spots. You know, high mountains, Rob's butt. Yeah, yeah. Several stories tell of this monster of Native American lore. Among the most famous stories about the Uctena is the battle between this fierce serpent beast and the uh, Tlanua. Hold on a second. <laughs> you got it. Tlanua. It's a giant mythological birds of prey that nice. possess impenetrable metal Ooh. feathers. Damn. If you have metal feathers, send us an email, brohiopodcast at gmail.com. As the legend, as the legend goes, a pair of Tlanuana had been terrorizing. <laughs> bless you. You did good, man. Tula. <laughs> there's another there's another moana coming out is there yep hmm. moana too huh fuck the rock fuck rocky <laughs> this thing this motherfucker had been terrorizing a local village by swooping down and grabbing the villagers dogs <laughs> and children Damn. to feed to their young the tribe's medicine man devised a way to reach the tulanoana's eggs and throw them out to the river where the uktena immediately devoured them the horned serpent Enraged that their young had been eaten, the mythological birds killed the giant serpent. You're fucking assholes, man. Big gains, brother. Killed it. Brother. Fucking just pick it off their pets. Speaking of brother. Brother, brother. Yeah. Some of you, if you're in the Facebook group, <clears throat> Bro Ohio Podcast, Butt Chuggers, Anonymous Password, Bill Wilkins. I put up a little picture of me and my daughter on our way to the f- daddy-daughter dance. Fucking adorable. I sent that same picture to Rob of me wearing lavender and a bow tie, yeah. and he said I look like Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> I said Nick DeGeneres. <laughs> Can't even wear purple around your fucking bitch ass without somebody thinking something that's not true. You're not cunty, though, so I mean you're... I'm a little cunty, but not as cunty as Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> That's true. She's the ultimate cunt, bro. Yeah, she is. Man, she's such a f- she's such a facade. Just yeah, yeah, fake. Yeah. But we went to the father daughter dance. We had we went to dinner beforehand at Harrison's, mm-hmm. and we then we danced the night away. Great time. But yeah. I have been drinking about th- three to five gallons of water. I've been drinking a lot of water, dude. And I went to this little. I knew there was a bathroom close to the gym. Yeah. And I knew there was nobody, there was not going to be anybody in it. So I went there, and lo and behold, there's somebody in there pooping. Oh, man. Hell yeah. Big, long motherfucking ski shoes. Just a big dude in there. You could tell he's just hanging out of the, hanging out of the stall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's all fucking dick and elbows. I said, all right. It didn't smell too bad. So I said, I'm pee. <laughs> I start peeing, and then I hear, excuse me, sir. <laughs> And I didn't say anything back because I thought he was on the phone or something. <laughs> he said, hey, brother, can you help me out for a second? And I could tell there in this father-daughter dance, there was a lot of grandpas and older yeah, people there. Yeah, yeah, And this is an older dude. I could tell. And I said, yeah, what do you need, man? He said, I don't know how I didn't see it, but there ain't no toilet tissue in here. <laughs> dude, that's the fucking worst, man. He called it toilet tissue. Toilet tissue. Okay. So I ain't got no toilet tissue in here. <laughs> I said, all right, no problem, man. I think there's a janitor's cart route here. I'll, I'll sneak out here and grab you some toilet paper. He said, oh, that's fine. Or if you hand me a paper towel or anything, it's a, I said, they, they got hand dryers out of here. So <laughs> oh, dude, that sucks. I'm going to grab guy. you some toilet paper. He said, oh, buddy, I'm embarrassed of the gills, but I. <laughs> Just Southern grandpa. Yeah, not, no worries, dude. I'll be right back. So uh, I go out there, and there's, like, economy-sized rolls of toilet yeah, paper. Yeah, yeah, the huge ones. Yeah. I, I'm fucking picking up. I'm like, God damn, this is heavy. And I go back in there with it. And Ryan's about to hand under sl- under the stall. He's got his hand kind of under there. Yeah, yeah. I stop. And I was like, I'm going to play a little trick on this guy. <laughs> so I tear off three squares. <laughs> I fold them up nicely. <laughs> and I hand him three squares. <laughs> so fucked up. <laughs> there, you fucking menace. This poor old man. <laughs> he said, hey, bud, I know this is the kid's bathroom, but I'm a big boy in here. <laughs> He's probably sitting there thinking, like, this fucking idiot. <laughs> this dipshit motherfucker. <laughs> He's looking at your shoes. <laughs> He's trying to figure out who this motherfucker is. <laughs> oh, my God. I 
I started laughing so fucking hard. <laughs> and then that dude started laughing. <laughs> and then this is the best part. <laughs> when he started laughing, his hand disappeared from under the stall. Yeah. And I was laughing, dude. And then I looked up. <laughs> And he had grabbed the top of the stall so his big hairy knuckles were hanging over the top. <laughs> and he was laughing so hard the fucking the thing was rattling, <laughs> like the door was rattling and the the partition was rattling. <laughs> Poor guy, dude. He just wanted to wipe his ass. You're fucking giving him three sheets of hot ply. <laughs> <laughs> So then I said, I got you, buddy, and I handed him uh <laughs> he handed him the whole entire roll. Yeah. And he said, That was a good laugh. Thanks, but <laughs> thanks, brother. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> said, I ain't got no toilet tissue. <laughs> oh man, that's great. So then I spent the rest of the night looking for these motherfucking size fifteen <laughs> sketcher boots. Yeah. And I finally found the guy out there walking around, and I'm I'm glad it didn't escalate because he would have beat the ever living shit out of me. He was big dude, a mountain. You can just face look like a knuckle. He was just <laughs> fucking big. Yeah, just a h- huge man. He, I bet he was just. I bet he's in there fucking naked to this shit too. <laughs> just fucking annihilated that porcelain. Put fucking divots in it. He said, "I know this is the kitty bathroom, but I'm a grown man in here." <laughs> Poor guy, dude. <laughs> is that fucking cheap ass on uh, uh oh, toilet shit. paper too oh that shit's the worst man when i saw his big fat hairy knuckles come over the top and start rattling that thing i was i was unhinged at that you're point you're fucking hurting <laughs> yeah. that's great dude i'm a grown damn boy and you're taking a shit <laughs> don't you smell it partner you want to smell my poop as a matter of fact man. i do <laughs> You have no idea what trap you walked into, sir. If you want to smell our poop, send us an email, brohiopodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to share it with you. Hell yeah. In the meantime, in between time, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of the Brohio Podcast. It's 734, which means we still get to spend ample time with our families this evening. Join us on our cruise. Oh, my God. We got some... Well, one live show sold out, potentially one other live show coming up. We'll let you know about once we figure out more details. Thank you guys for coming. Mm-hmm. Um, I just came to it. If it is your thing, if water's your thing. If you want to have a water baby, you know, throw a water baby into the fucking ocean. It's my water baby. It's my water baby. It's my water baby. That's fucking, that's a hit, dog. It's a bop for sure. That's a fucking bop. It's my water baby. Love it. (laughs) Fucking keep it going. Let's play this shit out. I I have a... (laughs) I share an office with a couple guys where I seldom seldom only talk about work. I just like to keep it private. But the other day, I was on a pretty substantially... I was on a, a of a, a you know a meeting a little uh, online a lot of people do the Zoom and and Skype and Teams meetings and it was one of those you know it was one of them Teams meetings yeah yeah and it was something that I've been working on for a long time a lot of importance there mm-hmm. and these guys I share the office with typically pretty smart I mean they're, they're smart guys but they're typically pretty reserved yeah yeah pretty quiet they know like when business is business and when work fun is fun you know they're pretty good about that sure. But I'm on this important meeting. I've been waiting months to talk to this person. And this guy sits in there with me. He has a, like, a, like a Bose speaker, loud motherfucking speaker. And sometimes on Fridays, we'll pump some tunes in there, get mm-hmm. it going. Yeah. And that day, he decides that he's going to play a w- fucking Waffle House training video at full volume <laughs> while I'm on a call. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> so let me see if I can eat Waffle House training <laughs> video. Talking, jeez, I just can't tell. Oh, that's great, man. (laughs) (laughs) It's my water, baby. Cerber of eggs. So why don't we talk about them first? (laughs) 
All of our egg breakfasts are automatically served with grits and white toast. So I'm having the fucking call of a life here, okay? <laughs> or possibly wheat, raisin, or Texas toast instead. I'm having the call of a lifetime here. I've been waiting so long to talk to these people about very vital information that I need to help my endeavors. Simply place a right side up jelly pack vertically. And in my fucking the background of this office. <laughs> jelly pack represents two eggs, That's pretty fucking funny, dude. He's got this shit. He's got this dumb shit <laughs> cranked up to. Ten. <laughs> fucking eleven. <laughs> and I start staring at him. And I can't if the finally I mute it. I'm just staring at him. You simply and he's maniacal. <laughs> he's diabolical. He's got shit wrong with him. For tomatoes. He just keeps on playing this shit. <laughs> simply add a slice of tomato and for oatmeal instead of grits. So naturally I slam the goddamn door. I just leave the office. I slam the door. I go finish my meeting out in the God's country out in the middle of nowhere in the yeah. in the facility. Their grits to be served in a bowl. You would indicate but they're in there doing their with this shit just fucking cranked, <laughs> dimed in. Sliding. Yeah, that's hilarious, order, man. Of all the things, like, do you know how their the how their their program the works here? You told me about it. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. They, it's wild. If the customer wants raisin toast, that's crazy. Interesting. Yeah. We could work at Waffle House just after that four minutes of us watching that. Yeah, we don't look like uh, people that would work at Waffle Those people have a distinct look. Like, it's like the same about like Walmart greeters. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the same. They're cut from the same cloth. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Top comment says, thank you for watching this training video. In our next lesson, we'll review mixed martial arts and close quarter combat. It's <laughs> a Waffle House, dude. Gotta, it really is, man. You got to fucking fight. You got to cook a fried egg and fight for your life. You know how to smoke menthols while cooking. <laughs> I like Waffle House. I fucking love Waffle dude, House, Dude, I love man. that chili. Oh, dude, Burt's chili. Burt's chili. Fuck That's yeah, your dude. special blend. Love it, dude. That's your secret recipe. It's made from the heart. It is. It makes you fart. If you farted at any time <laughs> during this podcast, send us an email, brohiopodcast at gmail.com. Thank you guys so much for listening. We appreciate it. In the words of the delicious Nicolicious. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> hey, is that Dio? Dio! There you go, guys. Fucking in harmony, man. In sync. All right, beautiful. I love you, motherfuckers. Bye. Hell yeah, YouTube. <laughs> All right, guys. Hell <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Hell divers, too. Nope. I just play Power World. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Pokemon with guns. Let's fucking go. Okay. <laughs>